Today we're going to be looking at one of the biggest improvements that you can make for visual effects inside of Blender that will really speed up your workflow. Now before we get started, I just want to say a massive thank you to all my Patreon members. Without your support, I don't know if I could provide free content here on YouTube, so I really do appreciate it. Link will be down below if you want to check out all of the amazing perks I offer. Also, I just quickly wanted to point out that I have two full visual effects courses. So if you are interested in learning more, one where it's everything about visual effects using Blender and then one more catered for advertising visual effects using Blender and After Effects. So those will be down in the description below if you want to check those out. OK, so let's go ahead and hop into the video. Now, today I wanted to talk about why visual effects in Blender is so slow some of the times compared to other uh, things you do inside of Blender and how to actually fix that. And so I have a scene right here. I literally don't have any objects in my scene. It is in solid view. And so in theory, it should be running fine on my machine. Uh, but if I kind of scrub through here, it's super choppy. And so I've had a lot of people kind of ask me why this is uh, specifically when dealing with visual effects. And that is actually to do with the background images inside of Blender. Now, if you don't know, background images is a thing that we use uh, inside of visual effects in Blender just to see the background of our camera. If we come out outside of here, we can't actually see it. Uh, but inside of the camera, we can. And so if you are having issues inside of the camera, but not outside, this is probably what the issue is. And so uh, the biggest issue is uh, the uh, visual effects workflow inside of Blender. And so in order to get to this page, by the way, you just click on your camera, you can go to the camera properties and you can see your background images. And so Blender is uh, very good at uh, MOV files or MP4 files. Any movie file it's going to be a little bit better at just because that's how the program works. Uh, however, in the visual effects pipeline, we constantly use image sequences. And so you can see down here, I have a EXR sequence in my uh, cache. And basically all that means is that every single frame is trying to load in a 4K EXR uh, kind of image sequence. And so that's very taxing on the software. And so how do we actually get the best of both worlds where we can still use this as reference, but still get uh, fast kind of results inside of our viewport? And so that's where proxies come into play. So what a proxy is, is basically the same exact time code of the footage that we're using. And so in our case, it's going to be uh, the same exact frame as we have here, but it's going to be a lower resolution and a little bit lower bit rate. And so both of those things are going to be really nice to kind of compress that image. It's going to be technically lower quality, but again, we're just using this as reference. And so it really doesn't matter. So my favorite way to do that is inside of a editing program. You can totally do it inside of Blender. But I like using DaVinci Resolve to render out my proxies. And so I'm going to go to DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci is totally free, so you can follow along. So right here, I have a image sequence folder. This is the EXR sequence I have rendered out, and that's the one I'm going to be using for all of my stuff, such as compositing, camera tracking, all that stuff. Uh, but since we don't actually need uh, the compositing uh, version of it for the viewport, we can actually go ahead and drag and drop this image sequence folder into here. And so now we have the same exact footage into our timeline. Uh, let's go ahead and drag this down. Just make a new timeline up here. Uh, now, depending on your uh, DaVinci Resolve settings, you might need to right click and go into the timeline settings here. Uh, now, personally for me, I just stick to 1080p. I believe the EXR sequence was in 4K. So we're going from 4K to 1080p, or basically you can think of it four times less pixels. And so that's going to really help the software kind of load that stuff in faster. Uh, so let's hit OK down here, and now we're ready to render this out. Uh, now here are the settings I typically use for my pro proxies. I like to stick with MP4. I just find MP4 works a little bit better than an MOV. And then codec uh, for this, I like to stick to H.265. It just uh, compresses it a little bit more than H.264, and so helps out there a little bit more. And then finally down here for the quality, we just want to make sure that's on low. Uh, you can maybe get away with medium or least, but I like to stick to low personally. And uh, those are the main settings I kind of uh, put. And so, uh, of course, just kind of browse wherever you want to set that location, add to the render queue. And then once you have that rendered out, you can just come up here and hit uh, render all down there. And so, yeah, so that is how I kind of render that out. You can see uh, the base footage that we have right now is uh, 6,000 kilobyte or 60,000 kilobytes. And then our uh, proxy that we generated is basically 10 times less than that. So 6,000 kilobytes. And so, again, that's just going to save a lot of data and help Blender kind of load that data in faster. So let's go back to Blender. How do we actually import this in? It's super easy. All we have to do is we'll come over here and just replace the image sequence folder that we had before and just replace it with our proxy MP4. And so we can open that clip, just let it load. OK, so it is loaded. We can go ahead and scrub throughout here. And now we have super smooth playback and we are ready to start dealing with our CGI inside of Blender. And so that is kind of the workaround that we have to do uh, just because visual effects uh, deals with image sequences and Blender is not really made for image sequences. So we have to go ahead and convert that into a proxy. Uh, so a MP4 file. OK, so that's one of the biggest things that I do in my visual effects workflow that kind of helps me out with visual effects inside of Blender just to speed up that process a little 
little bit. I know a lot of you guys have had that problem. And so hopefully this uh, solution kind of uh, works out again. You want to be using that EXR sequence if you do go into compositing or color or anything like that. And that proxy is uh, purely just for this. Uh, even if you're doing textures inside of Blender and using the footage, it's always better to use those EXR sequences instead of the proxies because the proxies are going to be lower resolution and all that. Anyways, if you want to join my Patreon or courses, I'll have all of those linked down below. But thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next video.